Hi all, welcome to our session, Patterns and Practices for Automating Business Workloads. My name is Costa, working as a global black belt in Microsoft. I'm a developer at heart and helping customers with cloud native and AI apps, but lately uh, a lot of agentic apps. Over to Xiao Yun. Uh, hi, I'm Xiao Yun. So I'm a, a software engineer in Microsoft and I'm currently working on the agentic application and machine learning in .NET. Okay, let's look into our uh, agenda for today's session. Uh, we're going to show you a few patterns and primitives that you can use to build AI applications and more specifically, agentic workloads. We'll start with a quick primer on agents and intelligent systems. Uh, then we'll go over a few scenarios we see are a good fit for agentic workloads. And lastly, we're going to describe a few patterns and practices and show you how you can add them to your existing apps. Uh, before we dive into the specifics, let's start with a quick primer of agents and agentic systems. Uh, let's do a little recap of where we are today when it comes to adding intelligence into our apps. Uh, you've probably heard a thing or two about the new AI models, specifically the large language models. Uh, when they came out, our first applications and uh, were mostly chatbots. Uh, they used the LLM's ability to answer questions uh, a very sophisticated ones, but still limited to its training data. Then we wanted to use the LLMs to ask questions on our own data, which gave birth to a pattern called RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. And up to this point, we are using the LLMs to create applications that you can say are more about asking the model. Uh, and the next idea and realization we had is that uh, we, we can actually use the models to ask them to do stuff for us. Uh, with the addition of function calling to the models, that became largely possible. And we were able to build copilots that help us accomplish pretty sophisticated tasks. As the copilots grew larger and more complex, uh, we figured out we can split them into smaller agents and smaller domains uh, and have multiple of them collaborate to achieve a task. Uh, that gave us the possibility uh, to have more intelligent coordination, resulting in more autonomous agents. Uh, those agents can plan, coordinate, and decide with minimal human intervention. But what do we mean when we say agents? Uh, there are a lot of definitions out there on what constitutes an agent. And in our context, we're going to say that agents are programming primitives and patterns that has their own behavior, knowledge, and context, as well as different levels of autonomy. Uh, let's dive a bit into what that means. So behavior maps to the prompts and functions or tools that the agents can use. Knowledge maps to the specific data the agent has access to, like a dev agent knowing about the well-architected framework or a call center agent knowing about the device manuals of, of a set of products. Context maps to a memory uh, of the agent or the state of the current task of the group of agent collaborating. Uh, different levels of autonomy means we have agents with uh, uh, various uh, degree of autonomy. On one side, we have the explicit agents where all of their decisions, plans, and orchestration is mostly uh, done through code explicitly. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have agents that are fully autonomous uh, and can react on changes in their environment. Uh, so they can plan, take actions, uh, and uh, make decisions on their own, of course, using the LLM. Uh, and uh, truth to be told, uh, most agents fall somewhere in the middle uh, where we have some aspects are explicit and some are uh, a bit more dynamic, so they have a bit more freedom. Uh, one thing we want to point out is that uh, agents and agentic applications are not tied to a specific framework or a library. Uh, they're more of a pattern, much like microservices. A specific case of agentic applications are so-called multi-agent workflows, where we have multiple agents collaborating on accomplishing a task. Main benefit is that we can split the responsibilities into smaller chunks and use the right tools and data for the job. Uh, well, not a rule by any means, we found that mapping agents to entities from the domain-driven design world uh, is very useful in helping modeling uh, those agentic and existing workflows. Now that we have a better understanding of what agents are, let's look at some high-level scenarios where agent applications can be particularly applicable. 
So first, a scenario that comes to mind often uh, to us as a developers is uh, creating dev agents that can help with our day-to-day -day tasks. Uh, those agents can collaborate to write and test code, run it in a sandbox, uh, produce documentation, and all, all that by integrating with our existing source control, CI, CD pipelines, etc. Uh, we have full control on the data we want to expose to the agents. For example, internal uh, coding guidelines, styles, libraries, and so on. Uh, also, we have the freedom to choose the AI models uh, that are going to back the agents, as well as where they run, uh, which is really important. A more conceptually interesting scenario is using agents for fulfilling high-level asks, uh, taking the cognitive burden from the end user. Uh, let's look at the first example. Uh, I have a party, the user asks, uh, I have a party for 20 people tonight, both adults and kids. Fill my card with drinks and snacks. Uh, so to, using today's applications, the user needs to decide what and how much exactly they need by manually browsing and searching the products in a catalog, uh, in, in the e-commerce in the e site, and picking the ones they like. Uh, if we reimagine this flow to be a bit more intelligent and agenting, we can have the user still describe the high-level ask, uh, what they want and what the requirements are, and a team of specialized agents, for example, type of drinks uh, agent or, or another type of snacks agent can collaborate uh, to combine the user's past preferences and the current task into a few more suggestions that the user just selects. Uh, and of course, the user can have interactions with the agents and can modify the suggestions, uh, but the cognitive load is significantly lower. Same pattern applies for the second example where the user wants to decorate or, or fill an empty living room with a tight budget. Uh, so instead of the user doing the cognitive work to try and fit different combinations of layouts and furniture, uh, instead we can have the agents uh, um, uh, take the high-level ask and combine it with uh, the user's preferences to offer a few suggestions. Another very useful category of scenarios is to use agents to make existing content production teams more productive. We have a couple of examples here. Um, let's imagine we have the first one is we have a team of, uh, ex of agents that are expert in different uh, parts of the law, for example. Uh, they can help a legal team audit a case uh, faster and with a higher quality. So they can start giving feedback based on their different uh, uh, specialization back to the team of legal experts, and that can significantly decrease the uh, time it takes for the audit of the case. Uh, another uh, example is a team of creative agents uh, that can help a marketing team create a campaign. So let's imagine once uh, the member of the marketing team describes the shape and the asks of the campaign, uh, a content writer agent can produce the copyright for the uh, campaign, a graphical designer agent can produce the graphical content, and an auditor can flag and give feedback to the agents if the co uh, content is violating any legal or brand uh, guidelines. So now Xiao Yun will walk you through the sample app we're going to use to demonstrate these patterns. Here is the real world agentic application, the eShop support. Uh, we are going to use this application as a demo to illustrate different agentic patterns in action. Uh, let's start with an overview of this application. Uh, the system uses certain model agents to assist staff employees in managing customer tickets, such as product inquiry or refund request. Now, uh, let's look at the user interface. Uh, on the left side of the screen, uh, you will see a customer window. This is uh, where staff interact with customer tickets. And in the top left corner, uh, you will notice metadata about each ticket, such as uh, ticket name, number, and the category, customer information, etc. Below that is a window showing both the summary and the conversation with customers. And moving to the right side of the screen, uh, we have another conversation window. This is where staff can chat with our agents. Uh, in this demo, we have three types of agents that can respond to user requests. Uh, first, uh, we have the manual search agent. This is a rep-based agent that can search product information from a provided document DB. And second, we have a customer support agent. Uh, this assistant helps write replies 
and response to customers. And finally, uh, there's a task planner agent. This is a React-like single step planner that can break down complex tasks into a manageable single steps and assign the steps to another agent to execute. Uh, this agent works as an orchestrator to help other agents to coordinate and collaborate with task resolving. One of the main use cases for this eShop support is helping staff draft and resolve customer tickets uh, with the assistance of this agent. The agent works together to search product information, reply to questions, etc., uh, which can significantly reduce workload for staff employees, allowing them to focus more on complex, high-value tasks. In the remainder of this session, we will introduce several commonly agentic patterns and workflows using this demo as an example. This will give you a practical understanding of how this assistant agent can streamline customer support operation using different patterns. Uh, back to you, Costa. Thank you. So the first pattern we're going to describe and show is the rack-based agent. Uh, this type of agent is specialized in answering questions on a particular topic or data source. The data doesn't have to be text, it can be multimodal, so audio, video, uh, images, and so on. Uh, where this pattern is useful is where we need to, uh, we need different prompts to answer questions that belong to different domains and they require retrieval of different sets of data. As an example, imagine we have a team of call center agents, each having specialized knowledge around a particular topic. Uh, one agent is able to re retrieve the right data to answer questions related to products and user manuals while another one might be able to retrieve customer invoicing data and answer questions related to that. Uh, let's see this pattern in action. Um, before uh, diving into the demo, uh, let's uh, briefly overview the RAG workflow the, that the manual search agent will take. Uh, the workflow will begin with the user uh, submitting a task to the manual search agent. And uh, the manual search agent will utilize a language model to generate a query based on the given task. Uh, this query is then used to search a document DB, which houses the content of the manual. The document DB will return the most relevant chunks, which are provided to both the manual search agent and the user as the final answer. And uh, now let's jump into demo. Oh, can you okay, switch the screen? Thank you. And uh, thanks. And uh, in this demo, we'll be uh, using the ticket uh, for for as an example. And in this ticket, uh, the user asks a question about a Luminex Latin system. And to find the answer, uh, we can instruct the manual search agent to search for the product information directly from manual uh, by clicking on this shortcut command, which will send a short request to the manual search agent. And the, the agent will first generate a query based on the provided summary, and then search a manuals using this query. The search result, which uh, consists of uh, raw text chunks from the menu, will be returned as a final answer. Uh, it's important to note that in this demo, the raw text chunks are returned directly without further processing by the manual search agent. Back to you, Costa. Thank you. So the second pattern we want to show today and describe is the author critic pattern. Uh, the basic idea is that when the author generates content, we'll have another agent give feedback on that content. So if needed, the author agent can improve it. Uh, we usually do that in a loop until the critic doesn't have any more feedback for the author, but for a limited number of iterations. We can have variations of this pattern. We, we can add more agents to validate different uh, aspects of the content and improve it even. But the idea stays the same. Uh, we apply different perspectives and iterate on the content before sending it forward. If we go back to the marketing thing example, we mentioned before a content writer agent is tasked with producing the copy for the campaign. And the auditor agent can check if everything is in line from uh, a legal and brand guidelines perspective. And if it has feedback, uh, that will go back to the content writer and that loop continues until either the critic is satisfied or we are uh, running out of iterations. So let's see this pattern in action. Uh, here is how the author create pattern 
is applied to the eShop support demo in the customer help agent. And in this case, uh, the critic will serve as a safeguard, uh, ensuring that the responses generated by the customer helper agent are appropriate and are suitable for the workplace. This additional review step is important to prevent the delivery of incorrect, inappropriate, or potentially off uh, offensive replies, uh, which could harm customer relationships or the company's reputation. And in the workflow, when the user creates a task to draft the reply, uh, the customer helper will generate a response. And in this time, instead of sending this response directly back to the user as the answer, uh, the, ans uh, the drafted reply will first forward it to the crit which is another assistant learning model agent. And for review, the critic will check the content for any issues, uh, such as uh, inappropriate language or misleading information. And uh, if any problems are detected, uh, the customer helper will be invoked next to revise the answer until the response passes the, critic, uh, the critic's review and sent back to the user as a final response. Uh, now let's jump to the demo. And uh, we'll still use the uh, ticket 404 as the example here. And uh, after the manual search agent retrieved the product information, uh, we can then invoke the author creative workflow uh, by asking the customer reply agent to draft the response based on what manual search agent found. And we'll type in custom write a reply and uh, hit enter. And uh, uh, in this workflow, let's wait for the work, uh, workflow to finish. And uh, now it's now it's completed. And we can see that uh, the customer reply agent uh, firstly uh, generate a draft, and then the critic agent is then invoked uh, next automatically to review the answer. And in this case, we can see that uh, the draft response from the customer reply agent is applied appropriate and concise. So uh, the critic agent uh, approves the reply as a final answer and su successfully completing the workflow. And in the next step, uh, the, staff, the staff employee will be able to click on the use as the reply button here to copy and paste the uh, draft response to the customer window and use this as the final reply to your customer. Back to you, Costa. Thank you. And the last pattern we're going to show today should be a familiar one. Uh, just like we are assembling existing workloads in our apps today, we can define agents to react to events, invoke actions as a result, and produce their own events. We can combine them into groups and use them to assemble complex and sophisticated workloads, uh, which integrate with existing systems and APIs. As an example, let's imagine we have a team of dev agents that can react to GitHub issues and implement a new application or change an existing one. So we start by the user describing a high-level application in a GitHub issue. Then we have a dev lead agent that will break down the implementation to subtasks. And each of those subtasks will have its own team of agents to work on it. Uh, the team could be a developer agent tasked to produce the code and an architect agent giving feedback. So we have that loop of critiquing to the developer, and then the tester agent can write tests and execute them in the container sandbox. Uh, once the human in the loop reviews and approves the proposed code from the team, the generated code is being pushed to a PR that can be worked on and merged into a repo. Uh, now we're going to go back to uh, Xiaoyun to show the pattern in our sample app. Thanks, Costa. Uh, in the previous two demos, uh, we introduced two distinct agentic patterns, the reg and also critic. However, in some cases, resolving a task might require combining multiple workflows into one. And uh, in order to assemble this workflow into a cohesive process, uh, we can use a React-like task planner to break down the task into individual steps. Uh, these steps are created one at each time, and each step will be created dynamically uh, based on previous context. After a step is generated, it will be assigned to the appropriate agent to complete the workflow. It's very similar to uh, how the React pattern works, uh, where the task planner also operated in two stages for each iteration. And in the first stage, it will first observe the current context and create a single step. 
which includes a brief description of the current steps objective and uh, assign it and uh, it will be assigned to uh, uh, a group of candidate agents. And uh, in the second stage, while the task planner awaits for the agent to complete the current step, and once the step is completed, the task planner will gather the result and determine if the overall task has been completed. If additional steps are needed, uh, the task planner will generate the next step. And uh, if the task is completed, uh, the task planner will conclude the workflow and returns the final result to the user. Using the task planner, uh, we can assign uh, uh, we can seamlessly integrate the previously demonstrated rack based and also grid patterns into a unified workflow as shown uh, in the PowerPoint. In this uh, final assembled workflow, the task planner acts as an orchestrator, breaking down tasks into uh, manageable steps and assigning them to the appropriate agents. And in this case, it's the manual search agent or the customer reply agents. Uh, and uh, this uh, workflow allowing each agent to complete its step using its respective workflow. Uh, let's uh, jump to the demo. Uh, so in this time, we will still use the ticket for it for as an example. And uh, this time we're going to use task planner as orchestrator to complete both a uh, rag retrieval and uh, also critic reply in my request. Uh, to do this, uh, we will first uh, can uh, send a uh, search manual and draft reply message to the agent window. And uh, the task planner will be involved first, uh, creating the first step, which is uh, to instruct the manual search agent to search for the product information. And uh, this follows the rack pattern. And after the manual search agent retrieves the relevant product information, uh, it returns the what it finds to the task planner and, uh, and marks the first step as completed. And uh, the task planner then analyzes the output and uh, determine the next step. And in this case, uh, the task planner uh, create the next step as a uh, draft the detailed response uh, to uh, to answer customer's question and assign the customer reply as the next agent to uh, run the run this step. And here, the also create pattern comes into play. And after the customer reply agent draft the response. The critic agent is invoked uh, to review the reply. And since the response uh, this time is still polite and concise, the critic approves it and uh, marking the also critic, uh, also critic workflow as completed. Uh, the task planner then determines that the task has been successfully completed and marks the entire task as done. Uh, back to you. Thank you. So at the end, we will like to leave you with a few takeaways. Uh, so the first one is we have this, we've seen with the sample app, we don't really need to start from scratch. We can equip our existing apps with agents where it makes sense. Uh, second point we would like to, uh, you to take away is agents and agentic workloads map really well to existing wor uh, business workloads and they can increase the productivity of teams. Uh, the third one is even though the idea of more autonomy uh, for agents seems really promising, we don't need to start there. We can start with explicit agents, and once we feel more comfortable, we can increase the level of autonomy. And lastly, uh, we developers have a lot of experience in building event-driven systems, so that experience translates into building event-driven agents and workloads as well. Uh, now we are going to leave you with uh, a couple of resources that you can go to uh, read more and explore, dive a bit deeper into how to build agents. Uh, there are examples, scenarios, and a couple of libraries that you can use to get started with uh, building agentic applications. And finally, we would like to thank you for your attention, and we hope you learned something interesting today. Thank you.